Hello, I'm Debs Kay. Thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to my little studio. Um, okay, here on YouTube, what I'd like to be sharing with you today is how I started off this little painting here, um, a little duckling cruise. Um, lovely little painting, or oh, a lovely little photographic reference I found from a wonderful photographer, one of my favourites, over on Paint My Photo. Um, I'll pop the link down below for you. Uh, it's free and these lovely photographers over there uh, share their work with us, artists to have a go at painting. So big shout out to Sandy Bell, thank you so much. Um, and as I say, pop, follow the link down below if you uh, want to go and download it for yourself. Um, but I'm choosing to share, share with this, this today because I wanted to show you that sometimes you can, you know, sometimes I create a dry underpainting, sometimes wet, and in this instance I use a combination of the two. Um, and in certain paintings I find this really helpful, um, especially in this one because we've got the lovely, that lovely smooth flowing river there with all its gorgeous reflections. Um, and then, you know, sort of in, in between that sort of lovely soft sort of flowing river, uh, we've then got a little fluffy duckling right in the middle. Um, so you've got two very different looks going on there. Um, and I found that using a combination of both wet and dry underpaintings in this kind of instance is really helpful to uh, get you going off on the right foot. Um, okay, so I hope you enjoy the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you do or subscribe to my channel. It'd be lovely to see you some more and I can keep bringing you some more hopefully helpful content for you. All right, so let's get painting. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, apologies if my painting's a little low in the uh, in the frame there. Um, hopefully you can just about see it all. Um, um, this is one of my earlier videos and uh, it's a little bit low down, but it's a really useful little video. Um, so I wanted to share it with you. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, sort of like in, in, in my intro there, uh, I'm going to be using a mixture of wet and dry underpainting in this particular scene. Um, as you can see from the photograph there, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you've got those lovely reflections that are all smooth and then you've got this little cute fluffy duckling in the middle there um, so I'm going to be using a combination of both um, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm coming in with my darkest values um, and as you might be able to make out there I've got a very light sketch underneath um, showing me sort of like where my um you know where my reflections are in the water and things and where my little duckling is um, and I'm first I'm coming in with a, a really dark sort of uh, it's, a, it's a dark sort of uh, blue dark blue here that I'm using and the first thing I'm doing is going through as, as I usually do um, picking out all my darkest areas first um, now in this first first section here all I'm wor working on is the river itself um, now I'm not absolutely I'm not very great with angles so this is why I like to do this bit and I like to set down a wet underpainting to start this off um, the reason being is then that I know that the, the, every, everything underneath that it's not going to move um, as I'm sort of like moving along and I don't sort of end up sort of creating angles where there aren't any and, and sort of putting them upside down and things um, which my brain has a wonderful time at doing so, as I say, um, coming in with my darkest values first. Um, now, I'm using a hard pastel in this instant. Um, don't worry if you don't have a combination of soft and hard. You can use softer, a softer pastel for this, um, but keep your touch really very, very light if you do so that you don't get too much pastel on that paper because um, we want to be saving as much of that tooth um, as, as we can. Um, so, um, being fairly particular, I mean, obviously this video is speeded up a little bit, um, but in real time, it's really quite slow. I'm paying really close close attention now as to where my value shifts change um, so I'm now coming in with sort of like a it's lovely rich purple here because um, I can see all those lovely purpley colors I love the blues and aquas and the purples all together in this little scene um, so I'm using that purple there in sort of like my next lightest areas um, and now, as you can see, I'm coming in with the blue here. I've chosen to go with local colours on the on this particular painting, you know, i.e. the colours that are actually in the finished painting. Um, I don't, you know, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of different colours as it is. So I don't particularly need anything to sort of, you know, vibrate particularly under there or whatever. So I'm not using a, a contrasting palette in this particular instance. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've basically gone through from light. I'm just going with my lightest value there, as you might have noticed, um, just around the edges I'm paying attention to my um, reference photo right from the get-go uh, I mean some some artists you know just come in with one or two two or three different colors or whatever and they you know they take their underpainting with that um, and just sort of mass out a great big area um, but as I say in this particular instance we've got a lot of reflections going on in that river um, and a lot of different sort of colors going through it um, and and so I like to get those down to uh, at the get-go then immediately once I've sort of uh, 
uh, painted this in or whatever. I, I'm really I have a feel of where I'm going, and I'm, my lights and darks are already in the places that they they, they want to be. Um, so as you can see, I'm just going round, just touching up there, just popping in some of that extra light value, just where I can see it. Um, and now I've got a paintbrush in my hand. Um, now I've just used water. Um, now water and now you can use alcohol as well to do this process. Um, but I find I, I find actually I prefer the look that water um, that water brings. It does take a little bit longer to dry, um, but it's only a matter of a couple of minutes. And uh, you know you can go and get yourself a, a cup of coffee or something. Um, I don't have my um, I, now. I'm just literally I've got an old paintbrush here. Um, just a kiddie's paintbrush. You don't need anything fancy because I'm using sanded paper I've got this on Fisher 400 um, you know so don't use your posh your posh brushes on this because it'll just rip your brushes to shreds um, so this is just like a little cheap paintbrush that I've got and I've got a little pot of water to my side and I'm just uh, sort of dipping it in every now and again and um, you know uh, yes filling up my brush with water and as you can see the pastel that I put down is turning into a paint now this is, you know, this is this is where this is 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 great because it's really going to it's going to set once it's turned into this liquid liquid format it, it will set and these these marks that I'm putting down they're not going to move um, so you know if I end up later on and I've overworked a section or whatever or lost where my reflections go I can always get straight back to this underpainting and everything's going to be in the right place um, so I find it really really helpful especially as I say in like like here where you've got so much going on uh, you know in in a small space. Um, now I'm, I've got as I say, I've got my pot of water by my side. Uh, I'm not getting my water. Um, I'm, I'm not loading the the paintbrush up hugely um, with this um, because I don't want too many drips in this particular instance. It, you know, in some paintings you want those lovely drips to sort of fall into you know into place, um, but with this it'll just end up messing everything up, you know, and and pulling everything out. Um, so I'm using my paintbrush in the in the direction that I'm using. Um, you know that things are uh, things are. Going. So immediately, you know, I'm getting the feel of, of how those, you know, how those little ripples and things, how they're forming um, by using that, that paintbrush in the direction that things are going. And as you can see, I've been, I'm being fairly, fairly loose with it, um, but just trying to smooth it out as I go. Um, areas that I think, you know, that are a little bit blotchy or whatever, I just take a little bit more water and smooth those out. And as you can see, it just sort of like blending, blending these, these sort of colours, colours together, just so that I'm getting that nice wash. Um, but as you can see, you know, everything, it, it's, it's sort of, um, so that I haven't got that hard, those hard, hard, hard edges between you know where where the colors change and things um the water just sort of like gently gently disperses the the, the pastels um and so that's it i've now come back i've gone off for my for, for my cuppa well in my case it's a glass of coke um i've got off for that and i've let 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 the painting dry um but because i didn't get it too wet um you know it, it doesn't take too long to dry at all um and now what i'm doing is i'm coming coming in now um and i'm concentrating on this little duckling um, because as I say, he, he's a different kettle of fish here. He's fluffy, whereas, you know, sort of like our, our river is lovely and smooth. Um, so, but using the sort of exactly the same process I, I, as I did before, coming in with my darkest, I, I first thing I did was grab a little pencil and define that little eye. I want to make sure his little eye stays in the same place um, because that's that's quite important. So I use a, use a, use a pencil um, just to put, pop my eye in. And now I'm coming back in with my, with my dark value here now in this little duckling he's got, he's actually you know even though he looks like a little black duckling in the photo he's actually got lots of colors coming through his coat um, and so what I've done is I've started off with a dark blue um, now I do come back in with a with another dark value which is which is slightly gray and not as blue as this um, and slightly darker than this and you'll see that coming in in, in, in a moment uh, in areas where I can see it it's darkest um, now as I say exactly as I, as I did in the river you know I really like to get things off to a good start so I don't lose myself too much very easy to lose yourself in pastels because they do move around um so the the more you can get right in your underpainting the better really you know I found I mean I never used to bother with them but uh, since I started it surely does make my life a lot easier rather than having to keep going back and recorrecting and correcting things um so you might have noticed there I picked up that purple again because uh, on the edges of his coat you know sort of like you can see that the river sort of coming through 
through where his his fur is or his feathers are you know, down, I guess it is at that age, isn't it? His little down is just sort of showing those lovely purples through. And you'll see in a moment how how that come, comes um, because this little section, I, I won't be doing, I won't be putting this, I won't be wetting this bit down uh, because I want that fluffy look. I want him to feel as if he's fluffy and gorgeous. Um, so this I'm going to be taking a little bit of uh, insulation in a minute and um, rubbing this, rubbing this in. Uh, and then I think I go back to the river in a little bit. But I'll let you watch the process here for a few minutes whilst I just go around it. But as you can see, um, as I've done before, working from dark to light and then occasionally popping back, uh, making sure that I've got everything in the right place. OK, I'll let you watch. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, I've just about finished it, coming to the finish now of putting my sort of uh, colours on my duckling there. Um, just to point out, I didn't mention it earlier, I'm actually using another another really dark tone here. Um, and this one's a little bit of a dark red um, in the areas where it sort of seems, you know, it's still dark, but it's getting that little bit of warmth in the in the coat. Um, and as you can see, I've just gone around the little duckling now, just to sort of like firming up a few areas um, of where I want to make sure that I've got enough pastel on there um, so that when I rub it in I'm going to get the the, the, the the right sort of balance of colors and things um, and as you can see me there just popping into the popping in with my pencil there to get that little little tail feather of not all that little sharp feather that's coming out of him there um, and now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going back into my river now taking some of these dry pastels um, back up into the river I'm going around the little duckling first um, so that I'm going to make sure that I've got sort of nice soft transitions there I don't want hard you know sort of a hard edge between the duck and the and the river because you know then you're going to lose all that lovely fur um so as you can see i've just sort of put a little bit of that darker color in there again looking at my reference photo seeing where the subtle changes are starting to appear in the in the waters um and as you can see what i'm doing now is i've picked up that my really dark value again and wherever I see it's absolutely darkest, I'm strengthening, strengthening, I put my teeth in, strengthening, strengthening those darks up. Um, and you'll see me coming through the river now, um, going backwards and forwards, just sort of lightening up some areas and, um, you know, sort of like uh, darkening down others. Um, again, you know, as I say, paying as much uh, attention as I possibly can to my reference photo. Um, now, in general, I've been using the hard pastels and, and the pastel pencils, but here you just see me coming in. I've actually got a soft pastel in my hand. Only reason being, if I had the colour in it in a uh, hard pastel, I would have used it, but I don't. Um, so this is what I mean. You can use soft pastels, um, but as I say, you know, in this stage, keep your touch really nice and light. Um, not that I ever do a heavy touch anyway, but uh, keep your touch nice and light so you're not sort of clogging up that paper too much with the, uh, with the pastel there. Um, so I'll just let you watch sort of this process as I go around, just adding a few more colours into, the, into those river into that river um, and then you know I'll pop back in in a moment.
So there we have it. I've come in, as, as, as you can see, with a, a few more colours there, putting those into my river. Um, and, you know, where I can see those, you know, nice greeny colours, a reflection of that little duckling, because obviously bear in mind that reflection underneath, that's the reflection of his nice little yellow coat. Um, but as it hits that blue of that water, it's getting sort of a little bit more green in its colour. Um, and as a, a, you know, that's it. I've gone round and I'm just strengthening a few areas, uh, making my darks that little bit darker where I can see it's the darkest and sort of adding those transition colours um, and that's really that that's the process here and what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be coming in with a uh, piece of pipe foam insulation well actually I think I use a packing nugget in this instance um, but you can use uh, whatever you like really pipe foam insulation a little packing nugget this one was great actually because it had nice sort of sharp edges so it was really helpful into getting those areas um, where I didn't want it sort of too too smudgy sort of round the delicate areas of the eye and things like that so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using that, um, you know, that, that blending tool there. I'm trying to use it in the direction, you know, giving myself that head start right from the right from the get go, as I like to do, using it in the direction and using it in the manner that um, is suitable for any area. For example, where I just did the beak there, I'm sort of smoothing it out. And when I'm sort of uh, transitioning in this fluffy coat here, you know, I'm giving it little, little short, short, short strokes um, so I can get that little really nice sort of fluffy feel through there um, and you'll see me as I go through the river I'm sort of using smoother strokes and things um, so use your, use your bit of in, uh, you know use your, your blending tool um, you know in the fashion that it is going to end up in the picture you'll find that this really does help you and so there you have it that's sort of like a combination of a wet and dry underpainting um, which as I say in this particular instance I found really helpful with this little guy um, now obviously the process you know you're seeing it speeded up here it did take me just short of two hours um, and you know some would say that's quite a long time for an underpainting um, but this is a complex scene um, so it's really good if you can get yourself as much information before you're putting down your your pastels in a heavier fashion so I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you feel that you've learned something along the way. Um, if you want to come and join me over on Patreon, you can come and see the full length version where I sort of take you through from start all the way to the finish of how I created this little duckling on his cruise. Um, thanks so much for watching and spending some of your day with me. I do appreciate it. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please do give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. It'll help me grow and I can bring you some more. Um, I want to bring you as much content here on YouTube as I possibly can so subscri subscribing to my channel really helps me do that thanks so much i wish you a lovely day and um happy painting mm -hmm.